what my group is working on is primarily technologies for transportation and converting from internal combustion engines to electrification of vehicles. And so there's two ways we're looking at doing that. One is with fuel cells that are powered by hydrogen and the other is more commonly seen uh, battery electric vehicles. If we look at electrifying heavy duty vehicles, light duty trucks, buses with batteries, the cost and the weight of the batteries and the challenge of running them for long periods and fast charging rates becomes a significant hurdle. And so a fuel cell provides an excellent alternative to that uh, because of the quick refueling times, increasingly longer ranges, and the ability to have uh, the heat released by the fuel cell used for cabin heating, say buses and other applications in, in lower temperatures. Now there's still a lot of hurdles to realizing fuel cell vehicles. The main ones are cost and durability. Uh, so there's a couple things we're doing related to cost. We're working with companies through funding with the Department of Energy on trying to reduce the amount of platinum found in their electrodes. And now we're currently leading a Department of Energy project on using alternative materials to platinum. Actually, we're working with collaborators at the University of Buffalo who are in chemical engineering who have developed a new nanomaterial uh, that uses iron, nitrogen, and carbon. So it, it's very, basically very nice dirt that we can use to make uh, these electrodes and basically the economics of using those materials is transformative in the cost reductions. With the work that we're doing with companies related to uh, durability and performance using the existing platinum type materials, you know, those are things we're going to see in the next few years uh, in terms of where that material development sits. If we're thinking about the more advanced platinum free materials, those are things we're going to start seeing in 10 to 20 years is my expectation. So as I mentioned for uh, heavier vehicles, there's challenges with the current battery technologies. So we're also doing work trying to improve battery technology such that we can have faster charging with higher energy content in the materials. And so we have a National Science Foundation funded project on replacing the graphite you normally find on the negative terminal of a lithium ion battery and replacing it with metals, either lithium metal or silicon or tin based materials. And so what we're interested in there is how do we get the most lithium into those materials possible without the battery basically exploding with those materials absorbing so much lithium from the, uh, the positive electrode. So another part of our battery work is looking at safety. So we've been working with the, the U.S. Navy for several years in naval research on the safety aspects of using lithium. And so we're looking at the, the mechanisms that cause battery failure, and that includes the plating of lithium within the electrode that can form metal dendrites that cause an electrical short and can lead to uh, fires and thermal events. So I think it's a really exciting time for fuel cell vehicles. Currently in California, there are close to 7,000 vehicles that have been sold close to 40 hydrogen refueling stations available. Those are retail open stations. Uh, and so as we continue to see increased commercialization of vehicles, uh, we'll start to see a greater fraction of the larger and heavier vehicles using fuel cell technology to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and particulate emissions.